All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Writer's Block Podcast. Uh, this episode brought to you by the home team, Comedy Zone. As always, we're still here. It's not often that I get to do a podcast or like a, a, a interview, quote unquote, where I'm also meeting the guest when y'all are meeting the guest. Yep. <laughs> but I'm very excited. I'm very excited to be here and uh, get to talk to you, man. Special guest that we got today is my man, Don DePetta. There it is. I got it right. You got it Let's right. Let's go. Dude. Let's go. I was, I was worried. I was like, we don't know this guy. We're probably going to get his <laughs> last name wrong. That's what I thought. I read it, and then I was like, no, nah, that's DePetta. That's, that's yeah, that's dude. No, that's it. Know. How are you doing, man? What's going on? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm just waking up. Nice. Yeah. Honestly, I, you kind of sound like a little bit. No. You, you were rolling out? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I didn't get back here to like three something last night i went Damn. to i went to jack's beach and ended up uh dude i swam naked in the beach last jesus night. christ i'm naked in the ocean you definitely yesterday. caught something if you swam in jack's beach nah. i don't know but you got to go to one of the other oh, i, I cool. need a clinic <laughs> <laughs> i don't know ladies and gentlemen don is here at the comedy zone this weekend he's featuring right yeah. now with uh with matt rife all right so as you've been you've been seeing on my page and comedy zone page matt rife is in town this weekend don is the person you know bringing him up and doing his set beforehand so like how how has that been like like you know you said that in your set that you've been to this club before yeah i've been to this club quite a few times now uh, i've been featuring for i don't know probably like the last five years i gotta move up so i gotta, <laughs> stop, I gotta stop doing it no i just love um i i love doing like 25 30 minutes in yeah. front of people it's just super nice it's a super sweet spot for me right now that's um, dope i just got passed to be a feature act here i did like like six seven whatever guest spots and opening spots and stuff like that i'm trying to find a way to be comfortable in a feature spot you know what i mean yeah uh how was that for you like like did you have you went obviously you went from you know climbing up yeah so i had a i had a weird i had a weird track i pretty much started on the road like i i grew up in comedy and and so like i had some connections as far as like different club owners and stuff so i i remember begging the dorfman's in nashville to let me come open and so like they put me up like early on in my career and let me host for like two weeks straight. Nice, and, dude. And just like gave me crash courses on how to like host <laughs> and do stuff like that. And then I would like literally like beg clubs to like let me host. And so like I would go to different cities just to host. Yeah. Um, and lose money, like lose, <laughs> to, yeah. just lose money. That's a big part of it. Like that, uh, I talk about that even right now. Like you, I lose money as dude, hell doing I, this i still lose money like feature. really yeah it's like break even lose money weeks yeah man. Uh, pretty much every single week is a feature if a club owner hears this pay your fucking comics more money <laughs> <laughs> pay your and also book me yeah All right, cool. pay your fucking features more money it's been a yeah. hundred dollars since the 80s you cheap pricks <laughs> <laughs> i don't care i'm fucking all of you <laughs> fuck all of you so uh, where did you start? You said you started in like Nashville around that? No, so I started I'm from Atlanta. The first set oh, I ever nice. did was in Atlanta, but I was living in L.A. at the time. Um, moved out to L.A. for acting, and so I was, you know, I was a couple years into acting, and it was like pretty much like slow goes, you know, uh, yeah. when you're first starting out. So I just started writing. Um, like shows and, and I, stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, well, I just started writing. I don't know what I was doing. I was just nice. trying to write, and um, it, it came out in joke form. I grew up in the punchline in Atlanta. So, uh, you know, my pops uh, owned the club with a, with a number of guys in Atlanta. So nice. I grew up at the, at the Atlanta Punchline from the time I was, like, little, man. And I remember, I, you know, worked every job there from the parking lot to, you know, to the kitchen, to the bar, <laughs> yeah. to, like, just you know, trying to, be to around. the door, just being there, you yeah. know. And so I think over the years, you, ju I, you know, you just kind of pick up on this cadence of, like, you know, these jokes. And you would hear seven shows a week yeah. of the same the same guys doing the same sets over yeah. and over and over and so when i started writing i think you know i just naturally gravitated towards like a joke form of like whatever it was yeah. and um it came pretty quick and so i started just begging people to like let me host in different places and then i remember i you know I, luck, lucky enough i got you know I, I asked a few comics and they would they started to take me to feature with them and so I was, you know, I was probably two years in, yeah. a year and a half in, starting a feature. That's really big. And so, you know, I would have, like, 15 minutes and have to fill the other 10 minutes yeah. with crowd work. <laughs> okay. You know? And yeah. so for the first, like, you know, there were, so there were years, like, the first couple of years that I would do, you know, just, like, and I got really good at crowd work. And then, you know, as you as you progress, you you, you write more, and obviously, like, now... I don't, you know, I don't need to go in the crowd at all, but it, it's interesting because I live in LA and so like 
you know, sometimes there are big gaps between the time I get on stage because when I'm, when I'm in LA, I'm focusing on like acting or writing or doing all that other stuff. And, um, in, in LA, man, it's, uh, it's a grind and it's, it's like, it's a grind that I just like haven't even really. So it's hard to like, like you're saying to juggle acting, I guess, and writing well, those I, and I mean, this. I mean, when I was in 2019, I did 27 weeks on the road. So I did half the year on the road. And when I came back, I, you know, I would have like acting or different other things. And really? so I was like, I'm not even going to go out in the clubs, you know, to my detriment, I should be out there every night, but, or not every night, but it's, <laughs> yeah. dude, I'm tired. I'm, you know, I, Honestly, just get I, get tired. That. Um, I need to be better about it. And, and I'm starting to, I'm starting to be, but you know, so all of my coming up has kind of just been coming up on the road. I never really came up in a city, so I've never really written, for a city I've never really been like oh this is my I don't really feel like I have a home yeah city or like a home club because everything I've kind of done has been on the road so like what describe like your road you know your road life and like doing actual shows on the road and going out like that's something that I'm, I'm now that I'm comfortable like with my set and my jokes like my big thing was like I didn't want to go somewhere and be guessing if my stuff would work you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I guess, like, uh, I don't know. That, for me, I wanted to go out and be like, okay, no, I know this is funny. So, like, even, you know, I'm not, like, going out here trying to be like, all right, I hope these people laugh type thing, you know? But Yeah, I mean, I think it's – I think the the more you do it, the, I think the more you kind of just get, like, I don't know, confident in the fact that, like, no, this is going to work. But, yeah. I, you know, in L.A., it's not to say that I don't go up. I have a couple places, like, that I hit all the time, especially if I'm going to go out. Like, yeah. I'll hit, like – I'll hit little holes in the, like, hole-in-the-wall places and, like, just to at least hear it out loud, you know? You're or like, like trying stuff out? Yeah, or, like, the new joke that I want to try out and stuff like that. And then I think just over the years, I've just trained myself to, like, literally not do it. And then, like, Thursday, be able to just, like, jump in, like, after a month and yeah. just restart it and just do 25. Do you ever feel, uh, like, guilty sometimes? Like, if I don't do a show for, like, three or four days, I'm like, fuck, I should really be doing a show, man. Like, why am I not going to do something? Do you feel guilty sometimes when uh, you're not up there? When it's when it, when it it becomes, like, a longer gap, yeah. yeah, I do. But, you know, like, three days, I'm fine. Like, uh, you know, there are a ton of, like, really successful guys that are like, oh, I got to get up every night. I got to get up every night. And look, I, I, I don't fault them at all. I get it. I think I think I would be much further along if I was like every night. But, you know, juggling this and acting and writing and like I produce a lot now, too. It's it's just tell me about that. Um, sure. Uh, just uh, produced a short uh, for Netflix. Nice. Yeah. Let me give you a round of applause. Oh, oh, thanks, yeah. Man. yeah. Uh, produced a horror short that I wrote. Uh, What's the a, name of it? Uh, it's called Mancha with a producing partner of mine. Uh, we just premiered two weeks ago at the Chinese Theater. Uh, really? Yeah. And it's on festival. Netflix right now. Uh, it's not on Netflix net. Okay. Uh, Netflix was the executive producer of it, Got so it. they gave us so they gave us money to uh, produce it, and uh, you know we have a meeting coming up with them about the feature and stuff like that. So they, oh, yeah. they yeah, it was like a fellowship. They gave uh, they gave a handful of people a chunk of money and said go out and make go out and make your short go create stuff yeah and we'll see and so it was it was a great man it was a it was a really cool opportunity and i uh during the pandemic what happened oh march the uh first week of march 2020 this yeah. was the club i was at like right before this comedy yeah, like like probably like two three four or three four five like yeah. those dates like right in there march yeah. march of 2020 and uh I, I remember being in the room and like getting the news that like they canceled Coachella and I was like, Oh, the world's about to shut down. <laughs> I was like, the, if, was like, if they, if they cancel Coachella, yeah. I was like, the world's about to shut down. And I remember I went home and like, you could, you could feel the wave of like whatever COVID was coming. Yeah. And I was like, if something in me was like, I'm not going to do stand up the rest of the year. And so I started writing. And so I, I was working on a short film at the time, uh, sat down, started writing a script uh, crammed out a feature and then started production on the feature in July with a group of, uh, you know, like people from the American Film Institute and like my producing partner and stuff like that. We went out to New Mexico and uh, shot a feature film and we actually, uh, we just sold it. I can't tell you who yet, but yeah. we just sold our, we just sold the feature. So Dude, congratulations, thanks, man. man. Yeah. That's pretty big, man. Yeah, no, it's big news. How do you, how do you like start that? Like, uh, like I write, shows now like I, i've always been creative with it like yeah. i started off writing shows before i was doing comedy i'd go to waffle house or whatever and just crank stuff out but i never learned the proper way to do it and like now i'm writing a show about this place yeah because like you know you know you've been here before so you see that you know you've seen the club managers change over yep you've seen all this stuff happen 
people here are characters, you know what I mean? And like, I've been trying to take advantage of that. So I've been writing this script that I'm working on now. And like, how do you start? Like, is ever you just go in with something? I think, you know, I think you just kind of write. I think obviously reading other scripts, um, you have to read a ton of scripts just so you can kind of get structure down. I mean, you can read script writing books all day. I think it's helpful. I don't necessarily like use it a ton, but I think you look at whatever shows you like, like you have to find the scripts, read them. And then you've watched enough television and film your entire life. You know what a three act structure is. Like yeah. you, you get it. <laughs> like, you, I mean, you know, I think, I think it's kind of just in us. Like we've, you know, we grew up on television. We yeah. grew up on film. Like you just start writing. You're like, no, this feels like this needs to go here. Yeah. I read a lot on Phil. And then, you know, I just try and keep writing and then I'll look back and I'll be like, oh, I need to fix all this stuff. But it's like, at least I have something to fix, yeah. you know? So just about showing up and doing it. Right. Yeah. It's so hard. Dude, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. it's, it's almost like, uh, I don't know for me, like now I have to like treat it as like, oh no, this isn't as hard as it is. Like I spent a lot of time thinking about writing mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, I could have definitely done, been yeah. done by now if yeah. I would have just jumped into it sat down man you imagine if you just do like you know they they'd say like two three pages a day you know in a month you'd have 90 pages you know you'd have your That's feature crazy if you just did two or three and you're yeah. like yeah two three not bad but you know it's just sitting down and showing up it's yeah. hard man i don't do it every day yeah i should <laughs> i should but i don't but i do it enough apparently yeah yeah let's go uh tell me about gaslit i saw this uh yeah i, I heard it mentioned last night at the show yeah. uh friday night and then so uh, so that's what i'm saying so like the stand up stand ups it like it's like I feel like I have four jobs like I I I do stand up but I also write and yeah. I produce and uh and I act and so like coming off the pandemic has probably been the best acting year of my life like I've probably booked more work since then like I don't know what what happened there's been a shift apparently yeah um yeah I did four episodes on a show called Gaslit on Stars Dude, starring Julia Roberts and Sean Penn um, it's about Watergate in the seventies and I play one of the Watergate burglars. So they put, put like big mutton chops on me and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, it was great, dude. I was wearing big, you know, wool suits with bell bottoms and shit. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was a good time, man. Yeah. That was a, that was a great job. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, th uh, there's been a number of like acting gigs now that like help really pay the bills, which is really wonderful because yeah. I get, cause it's just like. It's just this full time now. It's just yeah. like creative full time. That's pretty dope. That's yeah. uh, that's kind of the dream of what it. I mean, it's hard work for sure. But like, yeah. I I'm, I do like two day jobs, and then I'll come here on the weekend and help them out, and or still do shows or whatever. So like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, do you feel like like all of it? Have you found a way to make it kind of work together yet? You think or no? You, um, is it all separate in its own little part of? of I think I think everything kind of like builds on itself, like builds on each other. Um, you know, like the acting, writing, producing, or like the writing, producing world, I think are like together. Cause I usually, every, anything I'll write, I'll produce, which has been great. Um, acting is its own, like it's its own thing. I've been really fortunate. I don't know why, like to do like a lot of like bigger, big, like bigger, like high end projects, which yeah. is like kind of cool. Um, and, but I think they're all, a part of this thing that like helps the creative going so when i get here and i get on stage i don't feel like i've been sitting if that makes any sense yeah, so yeah. i've been performing yeah. i've been writing the whole time like i've been working i've been generating whatever this is yeah. so like you don't feel like you're it was just like stopped you don't no. want to jump back so into it's being never creative. yeah so it's never like it's never like you know these guys will be like oh if i don't get on stage for three days i feel like i'm starting over like yeah. i don't feel like i'm really ever starting over because yeah. like i like oh, so for example i'll do two shows tonight i will drive to tampa tonight after the shows take the 7 a.m flight to los angeles uh sunday i have a rehearsal and then i shoot a short film monday tuesday wednesday i'll leave set wednesday night fly back to tampa on the red eye and work is side splitters this thursday friday saturday nice. and sunday so it's like you know, I t yeah. it's just like everything just fucking, you just keep fucking moving. Man. Yeah. You just keep fucking you ever moving. You feel like you're moving like like too fast a little bit or um, like you can't keep up sometimes? Are you there? Are you present? I mean, I, no, I'm rarely present. <laughs> rarely <laughs> fucking present. I'm present up on stage now. Yeah. Which is like the only, like, I, which is why I think like I found like this love for like a, I think I've like found this reinvigorated love for like being up on stage in the last, like, I would say, I don't know, probably year. Um, 
because I've it took me seven years. I'm like seven years in, seven and a half years. I was going to ask you when you start. Yeah, uh, probably like seven and a half years in now. And it took me up until last July, I think, or August, when I did a string of one nighters up in Michigan. Yeah, at like shitty, shitty fucking rooms. Um, <laughs> like what was shitty about it? Like, so I, I went with a man named Stuart Huff, and if nobody in your comedy world or comedy circle has heard of Stuart Huff, uh, he's probably not probably he is, and I feel a hundred percent confident saying the best storytelling comedian in the country. Full stop. Wow, okay. Period. I gotta look this guy that's up. A, that's a full stop. Yeah. I put him up against anybody. All right. Um, Stuart Huff. Stuart Huff. Yeah. And uh, we did a street. So what was shitty about these is like we did a Wednesday night in Jackson, Michigan, which has the largest prison in Michigan. It's like a it's like a working blue collar town. We did it at a biker bar. So we did a biker bar in Jackson, Michigan for like 30 people, maybe. Uh, you have to fucking grab. You got to yeah. grab those yeah. people. Um, <laughs> I've done those Dude, I pulled, pulled up to the thing and like, it, dude, it was right out of a movie, man. There were bikes outside and like this old lady was yelling at it, like yelling at her <laughs> man, like just chewing his ass up. And I was like, I don't think we should be here. Um, then where'd we go? Then we went to uh, Lansing, Michigan and did a wedding hall. And it was the first the first show they'd ever done with comedy, so it was like a huge wow. spread out venue okay. table. They didn't know what the hell they were doing. Just yeah. a huge like that's rectangle the worst. Box. If, if the crowd and like everything is Dude, just dispar- all over and the place. you just and you just have to so. And then we went to um, and then we went to Kalamazoo, Michigan, and uh, I did a bowling alley. I did the side room of a bowling alley in Kalamazoo. And we rolled up to the Days Inn in Kalamazoo. Don't ever go there. I walked into <laughs> my room, and there was a huge like a huge circle of dried blood like on the carpet. That's, in the floor i was insane. like oh somebody got stabbed in that's here crazy. hard dude. recently and, yeah recently it was pretty re- <laughs> there was still blood on the walls and then i looked at the curtains and i was like oh they, they stabbed somebody and then closed the curtains i started to try and solve the crime somebody when saw i got it. in a room yeah yeah and then uh they just put a wet floor sign over yeah it. so like literally like we got to kalamazoo i dropped my bags i was like oh shit am i gonna change rooms i was like <laughs> the elevator didn't work either and i was like i don't want to take these back downstairs i was like well we'll live with this yeah. this is fine and uh then like dropped my bags and then went and did a show in a bowling alley and I was like well I got to talk about this and yeah. and you know and then uh, and then I did a uh Otsego maybe is that the name of the city I don't know some city in the middle of Michigan we did a rock bar okay. we did like a rock and so like w- he does all of these like like bar different one night off things in like different cities and and he's just so seasoned and like dude those shows make you such a better comic so fucking quick yeah so so quick because they're not there for comedy they don't know how to watch comedy they don't know the pro- and you're you have to do absolutely everything and then if something doesn't work it's not it's not their fault yeah it's my fault you think so so you so you have the belief that if if something's not connecting it's not the audience ever it's you it most uh, it's rarely the audience okay. let's put it that way it's rarely the audience man and in if like even last night there was at cer- at a certain point they dropped off for me and in my set i got them back but i was like hmm why did they drop and so like i'm doing my jokes but in my head going where did i drop them of oh, this was the reason i dropped them let me get them back here or like do you know what I mean? But it, but so I came off of those and like, I love talking like the, like the, like the stage shit of yeah. comedy. So I came off those shows and flew to New York. Cause I had to go do an acting job right after that in New York. Um, and on one of the off nights or maybe it was like after I'd, I'd left set, uh, I went and hung out at the cellar and, um, somebody threw me up uh, at, at the end of their show. Nice. And, um, you know, I did, uh, I did that back pussycat. I did that room. I did the side room yeah. at the cell. And like, and you know, the guy was like, can you do seven? And I was like, yeah, I can. I can do seven. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, no, really? Can you do, can you do seven? Like you have to have a good seven. And I was like, yeah, dude, I got seven. <laughs> I'm fine. Trust me. Where the fuck I've just been. I'm fine. And, yeah. but that, that shit makes you, doesn't make you bulletproof man but it gives you the confidence to just stand up there and yeah. like just ripped that set yeah. man I just be- ripped it i believe that like i like i think uh and i talk to like some of our friends all the time like uh, like morgan who who did the guest about last night we talk all like we i've done rooms where like literally not even rooms i've been like outside shows where they have a dumpster right next to us and we're performing right here 
at like a cookout event and we're having to literally yell to get people to want to come sit up here. I think that makes you so much better. You can control the room more, you know, you feel more comfortable. And then, you know, people see places like this and it's like, yeah, you get here eventually, you know, when you're doing good work. But like those shows are those make you. Yeah. Like I, I agree. Some people have differences. I don't know. But I mean, look, you know, I was I mean, I was kind of forged in rooms like this, but like I think like doing those other rooms like, you know, I, I try and go up every single set. I feel like, I don't know, maybe some comics waste stage time sometimes. They just what go does that up. mean? Like they go up and they're really not. What are you working on when you're up there? What are you trying to do? Mm, okay. You know, like. I don't know. You ever see guys at mics? Let's just go up and they're like, man, I didn't prepare anything. I'm just going to. Yeah. And you're like, well, well that's how a, like a good 30 percent of them start. Their and, set look, with. and I think and I think that's all fine and well, because like, you know, but like if you're going to do that, it's not like, man, I didn't write anything. It's like, well, I came up here with nothing with the uh, with like, I guess, with the idea that I'm going to be like, OK, I'm going to force myself to kind of generate some free flow yeah. thought right here, not like fuck around for the next three, five yeah. minutes or going to the crowd. Like you're or trying to laugh to the back of the room. You're yeah, you still try. You go up there. You still try to actually get stuff. You're not just. Yeah, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like I feel like you got to. Yeah. So, so I mean, I, I don't know, man, every show I'm at now, like and even these like. I was telling after I did those shows in Michigan and then I went to New York and I did I did that but I also did like Gotham and I did the stand and I was just like and just rip and like ripped them and like I'm not just saying that like yeah. like like did what I was supposed to do on Yeah you felt good stages. about what went on fuck yeah and then something just shifted where I was like oh I I can do I I can do this I can actually do this or like I really do this like yeah. I am a I am a comic like yeah. I think like I always had that question because I was always like in this world, out of the world, in the world, out of the world, and like always jumping back in. And I was like, oh, am I really a comic or am I just a guy that like does this like yeah. every few weeks? What do you think like a, a, a comic is, like like a comedian? Is? When, when uh, you know? I don't know what anybody else is definite. I just know what it is for me. Yeah. You know? I just know what it is for me, man. Yeah. I'm not gonna put that on anybody else. If, you, if you're one weekend and you're like, I'm a comic, I'm like, I right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jerry <you> are. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you cool. definitely have that a lot. Like, uh, like in this world here, like I, I go to all the mics and I'm here on the weekend, so I see the differences and everything and how everyone acts so different and what's going on. I'm just like, oh, these are two different worlds of the same thing. But like, some people don't know. Yeah, like. You know what's really possible like what what actually looks like you know what i mean because yeah. they only go to those like open mics or hole in the wall spots or whatever which are which is good i guess you know like going out and getting stuff on but i don't know i think there's a different level when you come watch you know people do stuff here where you're like oh you've been traveling all around and like now you're here actually working i can see the seasonness you know i can yeah. see is that a word yeah no know. it is i i like but I, I came off those shows and what i was gonna say is like i finally felt like my feet were planted on the ground yeah it was just different. Yeah. Like I could stand there, even in like even in a bomb or even if a joke didn't work, it doesn't fucking. I don't care. Like you just stand there and you go, okay, then like that one, next one, yeah, next one, yeah, next one. You never waver like in your brain where you're like, oh my god, like well, yeah. Do. What is there? I mean, honestly, it's like look, good show, bad show. What's the fucking difference? Yeah. Good show, bad show. What's the fucking difference? <laughs> you gonna walk off stage and nobody fucking at this club is really gonna remember. Yeah. The next fucking day. <laughs> you talk to people after the show yeah. and you're like, oh, I loved your joke about fucking CrossFit. And I was like, no, nah, that's the opener. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, you know, they yeah. got, uh, they're getting shit thrown at them for an hour and a half, two hours last yeah. night. Like, you know, like as long as they're having a good time in the moment, like that's, that's all I give a shit about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it, this is like this is like the last fucking place where, you know, black, white, Mexican, you know, racist, liberal, yeah. like can all sit in a room, and if if the joke's funny, if it's funny, people are gonna laugh. They're all gonna laugh. They're gonna fuck with it. They're gonna fuck with it. Yeah. And it's like, when's the last time all those people have agreed on something? Yeah. Honestly, that's one thing I do love about Jacksonville. Like, like I started comedy in Tallahassee, and you know, it was cool for a little bit, but then. You definitely saw the rooms get so PC, so like the, like the the bookers were literally like, all right, you can't say this anymore, you can't say that anymore. These are the kind of people we want to attract. And you're like, man, like what the hell is going on? Like what are y'all trying to to do? Like, and then coming back here and seeing all kinds of people actually still enjoying comedy yeah. and like I don't know, man. 
that's it's definitely different. That's why I love that I'm not. I don't consider myself an LA comic. Like I, I live in LA. Like yeah. I do stand up in LA, but I am not. In, like I don't consider myself that at all. Because it's like, because I laugh. Like LA is a fucking bubble, man. I laugh at people all the time yeah. that are like, "This is the way the world is," and I'm like, "You need to go to Omaha. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. What are you yeah, talking about? You. Oh. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, you did not go to Kalamazoo and fucking say that. Go ahead, <laughs> see what happens. Yeah, it's just like I'm. You know, so I like. Like these, like it's funny, man, and I, I I really love it. Like being here on like in different cities, like you get to feel what's going on, and yeah. like in L.A. or New York, not so much New York, but but definitely L.A. Like, for a while, it was all doom and gloom, and the world was fucking over. And then you go to another place, you know, like Florida, or Atlanta, and you're like, oh, the the world's fine. Yeah, people are fine. Yeah, everything's okay. Not everyone's up in a panic. Not everyone's no. fucking all uptight about everything you got going no. on. You know, no, I, I will say this, man. I, since I've I've been I've been doing a lot like this year and I've been going to different cities and I've been checking in with people and I'm like, how's everybody feeling? Like there's a lot more sadness out there. People are definitely like, yeah, people are definitely sad. People yeah. are definitely down. There's a lot to be fucking sad about, man. Yeah. But it's like, I, I, for me, I think like, and I'm not, I'm not good. I'm not a good comic with social media. I'm not a good comic with promoting myself. I'm not a good comic with branding myself. I just like, I made a decision that like, that's not my world. I don't give a shit. Like the 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 trendy this, well, the social media, what well, just the social media of okay. it, like promoting yourself, like doing what you're supposed to do to be a comic. Yeah, nah, dude, I don't fuck with it. Yeah, which is probably why I'm still feature. I do because <laughs> I just don't. Because it's fine. Because yeah. I just don't like. For me, it's about like, I don't know. It's about this. Yeah. I just like, you know, it, it, the connection with people, and then also like generating this thought or this idea that you have in your head that you've totally come up with that you're like, oh, if I do this well enough or put these words in a certain order. Like I can have 250 people understand what came out of me. Yeah. And you're like, well, that's yeah. crazy. Is it, is it, so you, so <laughs> you saying that like, uh, like I, I've just reached a point of like being comfortable in it. Cause like, you know, with, when you, you're obviously friends with other comedians mm -hmm. and you know, some of the people that you're next to, some of the people you talk to every day will have like thousands of followers on something. And then like, like me, I have like 1800 followers on Instagram, yeah. but like, I know that like if I'm doing this right and this makes me feel good, like yeah. I'm not I'm not chasing no. what they got going on. You're comfortable with that? Yeah, and it's just like, like so I feature uh, sometimes for uh, Chris Stefano. Nice. So and Chrissy D like is one of the best at social media yeah. and, and like doing it and like all yeah. of his podcasts and putting stuff on the internet and doing and like he is crushing it man and like his career is like he's taken off and like i fucking love everything that he's doing because yeah. he deserves it because he's a fucking he's an awesome dude i man. first heard about him from his half hour yeah on the, like i think i'm still like one of the only people who actually has like a i still go to the comedy central app yeah to go find yeah, these si things. you saw size 38 did you see <laughs> size 38 yeah, yeah man, 30 I, was, I flew to that taping early on when you i were there I started, yeah dude and he just rips man he's so fucking funny and yeah. he's just so funny in real life too and so like but he like he was like all right, I'm going all in, and he did, and it's like it's paid off fucking huge. But and and I see all my friends in LA doing it, and like you know, but I don't know. At some point, like I feel like you're beholden to it, like you're beholden to this thing that you yeah. have to kind of feed. Like you got to feed that beast of yeah. the, you know whatever the social media algorithm is. Like yeah, you, the fucking rents do every day on that Dude, motherfucker. It, it's and, ridiculous. And I'm just like, that's not. I got enough stuff going on, like that. That doesn't, I don't, that doesn't yeah. fulfill me. That doesn't like. That's like, a, like, I guess I'll describe it as like, uh, like, you know, you you have your acting and yeah. you're producing and you're writing and you're also doing stand-up yeah. at the and same so, time. And so like, I have all those other things and I have yeah. the avenue. And maybe like, maybe that's a, it's a different way or it's yeah. a long, it's a longer maybe game. Maybe this grows first, yeah. you know, and, and then so, just naturally and, and it yeah, happens. And then the naturally this happens, but it's like, I don't. I don't know, man. For me, like, I guess I really don't worry yeah. either. Like, I know I'm like, I'm going to be fine. It's going to work out. I just hit that, like, point, like, because, like, I, I don't know, like, a lot of my friends have, like, like my comic friends have more followers and all this stuff to me, but I'm like, no, man, like, it's it's a fine. Like, I'm, I'm focused on, like, like, at first I was trying to grow everywhere at yeah. the same time. Yeah. And I'm just like, no, if I grow this, yeah. let me grow, let me grow what I'm working on. Let me just grow, yeah. you know, my comedy or, or, you know, work on some, like, ideas for shows or whatever, and then I'll focus on tiktok in and, and all that stuff like i still post but i don't stress right. if i don't get the crazy numbers anymore like when i was early on in this i would be like oh my god this only had 
eight hundred views. They're probably bots or whatever. Like, yeah, but for what? I mean, yeah. you know, for what? Yeah. What are we doing? Listen, man, I'm about done with this phone anyway. <laughs> I'm about done. Like, I don't have. Look, I deleted Facebook years ago. I'm, Twitter, our, Twitter is whatever. Like, I read funny shit on there because yeah. it's ridiculous. Like, I don't have Snap. I don't have. I I don't have TikTok yeah. uh, and Instagram is the worst thing on fucking planet Dude, earth now been, if anybody from ig is listening you can hill, fucking die you <laughs> suck ass dude you are ass instagram is ass dude they're going downhill for sure for whatever Mark, reason what are you doing Zuck? for whatever reason and it's like i must have liked one girl's photo because like all i get now is ass and steak <laughs> on my ig <laughs> It's like it. It's all I get is fucking ass and steak, and I'm like, I want the steak. This ass is stupid. Yeah. Like get a, and like get stupid a, in a good way. No, or stupid it's stupid. Oh, okay. Like it's like get the know. fuck out like, of here. Where my where are good. my friends? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like where are my fucking friends yeah. on this thing? It's man. almost like I don't know. Like sometimes like it's like the algorithm just rewards bikinis and ass yeah, it's and all stuff. Does, dude. I I'm came up with an idea. That, like I don't know. Maybe like when I do stand up and post clips, I'm just gonna have one of my friends in a bikini behind me uh, while I'm telling jokes. Dude, I'm so done with it. Algorithm picks that shit up and i get it's that like what, i mean what is i mean what is, oh dude what are we doing now? yeah nothing makes sense anymore like like with that like no, you know what i mean no, like oh man i fucking I, hate it i got caught up in chasing that as opposed to progressing in writing and progressing right. in actually being funny and connected with people you know dude if you're funny you get stage time yeah if you're funny I look. I'm. I don't, I'm not calling anybody out, but you, just, you. I go to shows all the time in Los Angeles, and you see influencers or yeah. people with, you know, lots of lots of followers on it. Get up on that stage, and you're like, Phew. yeah. <sighs> you're like, I. <"All> right. <laughs> you're like, all right. Yeah. And that. Look. So I've never been to LA before. I I haven't been on a plane yet, but I'm finally going. <laughs> what, dude? dude? Yeah. I was supposed to go. <laughs> How 20, old are you? 20, I'm 23. Fucking. I, I was supposed up. to go get on a damn airplane, <laughs> dude. I was supposed to go in 2020. I was going to go do uh, some shows in DC, uh, but then COVID happened and that they stopped. Like they canceled all the shows that were going on. I was like, all right, well, you know, whatever. But this year, I'm actually going to go. So I've been making connections, like from doing this and yeah. just reaching out to people. I'm actually going to be going to New York later this year and Good. trying to get some work out and stuff like that. But like that's what when you brought up earlier, asking people like, how, how can I host? How can I do that? I had to get past like feeling weird about that. I'm like, all right, you don't want to annoy these people who are actually on their grind and what they are, you know, who are yeah. much bigger than you are. Like, like, is that ever an issue with you? Like, what was it when you're like, no, I don't, like, I, I think I was really selective about the, the, the headliners that I asked to like, Hey, do you have any weekends that I could go out for? Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I've never hit up somebody randomly. Don't hit up somebody randomly. Yeah. Don't do that. I'm looking right at the camera for that. one. <laughs> don't just DM somebody and be like, Hey, can I feature for you? Yeah. Don't do that shit. It's weird. Yeah. Don't do any of that <laughs> shit. They're also probably not going to see it. Yeah. Instagram doesn't even send DMs to the person anymore. It's yeah. like, it's, it's fucking trash. So now. it's like, oh, they don't? That's wild. Like they, they like some of them, but if you're, if you have enough followers, it'll go to like, like, uh, the they have suggested or, yeah. or like all requests or general requests, primary whatever, requests. Whatever. If you're just sending it, it's going to go in general. They're never so, going to see yeah. it. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I built relationships and I, you know, I, I listen, all of the, Life is about relationships. Yeah. Build the relationships, build the friendships, do the work, see, let people see you fucking work. And, yeah. you know, I, I didn't, I don't think I ever asked if that anything I wasn't like prepared for, you know, I was never, That's outra big. I was never outrageous in an ass where someone was like, you know, this is a fucking stupid request, dude. What are you talking about? That's big. Yeah. You, you feel like you're ready every time you bring and open it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. What, what do you think uh, so far today? Like, you know, what are you most proud of that you've done that you've accomplished or anything? Um, selling this feature was really big. We sold it last month. We're still working on it. We're still mm -hmm. finalizing everything. Um, we're going to have a theater release date, too, which is that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's yeah. wild, man. It's it, it hasn't sunk in yet, really. And I have like a really hard time. I have a very hard time, like accepting accomplishments that I do in my life. Okay. I, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know what I mean? So like I'll hit something and I do something and somebody be like, that's fucking awesome. And I'll be like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, it's yeah. just kind of what I like. I've done that my whole, you know, my whole career. It's been, you know, um, that like selling this feature and like writing it, producing it. And then, you know, I starred in it too. Yeah. Like that, this is a big one. Um, producing this thing for Netflix was pretty cool. I think like I keep hitting these like different like accomplishments and these different things that are like really big for me. I was in uh, 
I, I don't know, man. Doing four episodes on that, on, you know, on, on a mini series was fucking cool too, yeah. man. That was big. And then I don't know. I was in Green Book, won Best Picture. Like it won a couple Oscars. I a watched that years in ago theaters. Too. That's yeah. Crazy. So I was yeah, and all I'm the family. I'm gonna have to go scenes. back. Yeah, I gotta go back and watch that now. <laughs> Me and Sebastian play brothers yeah. in it. So I was, was working like, at AMC theaters when that movie came out. Yeah, it got a bad rap, but it was a pretty good film. <laughs> it got a bad rap. Dude. Yeah, but um, you know, so there's been a, you know just whatever the fuck comes up man yeah that's dope i have like uh like the same thing like people will talk to me sometimes or like oh man like no you have a partnership with the club you're doing your podcast you're doing this you're doing that i'm like man like i'm still i feel like i'm like i'm here still like i'm still i feel like i have all this i yeah i feel like i'm just at the beginning yeah do you know what i mean for what you got i mean i mean yeah you you're working it has to kind of yeah i feel like i'm just starting though you know i feel like i'm finally i'm feeling like i'm finally at the at the at the ballpark yeah like i didn't even know i wasn't even at the ballpark before yeah i was taking swings i must have been in the parking lot <laughs> just practice just practice but you don't know cars but you don't fucking know yeah you know you and no now idea. i'm like you don't oh, know until you i know. think i'm i think i'm close to the ballpark now that's what i was saying about like the difference between going to the open mics here in jacksonville yeah. as opposed to like i started coming here every weekend and and like I used to just stand in the back before Dude, before anyone the knew best me. Best thing you can do. Before anyone knew me, I'd stand right at that door, holding the door for guests and shit, just paying attention to the show, trying to see like what what the difference is from what I'm doing Oof. and how do I get big difference here. Huh? And it, dude, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Crazy. It's ridiculous. Crazy. Different, isn't it? Uh, it made me a lot better of a comic when I started coming to this. Just place. watching it. Yeah. Just watching comic and yeah. sit. Like I don't know why comics. Like if you're if you want to be a comic and you're in jail, I don't know why you don't sit in the back. And fucking watch yeah. everyone, and watch all the mistakes that yeah. people make. I've been here every single weekend since October last year. At least one show I had to come watch. At least even people I didn't know. Dude, you watching game tape? Yeah, you watching That's game tape? It, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I mean, what 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 are you doing? Yeah, you're, wa- you're literally watching the craft that you want to do. Man, there's so many different ways that like. And I don't know if you've gotten into it yet, but, like, the nuance of, like, how to work a room or, like, stage presence or, like, the way to, like, some people, like, you'll see some comics, like, if you really pay attention, like, some comics will do the same step forward on a punchline or, I, like. I just talked to my, one, of my, my, one of my comedy buddies, Christian, about that. We were, like, watching, because some of them, you know, we watch each other's films and kind of, like, all right, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Yeah. And I was like, every time he put his punchline out, he took a step back. And yeah. that was the thing. And I was like. Well, you train the eye. Yeah, you train the eye. I wouldn't step back. It's weird. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not weird. It's, if that's his style, it's his style. But it's like people people train things. Like, you can you can give, like, these physical cues on things for the audience, too, yeah. man. That are, like, you know, and, you know, it's this is a constant, like, dude, you're a lion tamer. Dude, you're a fucking yeah. lion tamer. You have to tame this beat. So it's, yeah. like, it's constantly checking in. Just, like, I split the room into thirds. Yeah. So I'm, like, this yeah. one, this one, this one. And it's, like, and it's it's constantly just, like, managing and making sure everything's okay and like sometimes like if this isn't working as well you like you'll step over to the side of the stage and deliver the next joke to that side of the room and yeah you pull them back and then you can work your way back to the middle you know and it's like th- there's all these different things like just just being on stage is like th- it being on stage in front of people is like the best i mean it's yeah. what we all want but yeah. it's like the, it's truly like the only way to fucking learn how to manage yeah you know and like I- I have like uh, some like I just like started learning the psychology of that. Like I used to walk around stage and, and tell jokes, but like I wasn't doing it intentionally, yeah. addressing the room and stuff. Yeah. Now I'm starting to learn like there's a psychology to be like, oh, when you stand on this side of someone, you're triggering something that makes them laugh right. a little more. You know what I mean? Or depending on where you are, that could also help the set. Right. Like you know, and like now I'm playing with my act a little more, trying it out and trying to feel things out. I feel more comfortable in it. I practice in here when no one's here. Like, I just come up here when I'm not doing shit, and yeah. I'll run through my act on different parts of the stage and see what I like and stuff like that. So I'm getting into it a little more now. Yeah. Are you coming to the shows tonight? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm here. I'm here every week, man. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see. Tonight. Like, I'm in this phase of my, uh, like, it, I guess in my progression that I'm, like, I'm with them, and I'm very present and connected, but I'm also, like, so in my head about, like, um, am I saying the joke this way today or like does this does this work better this way or like how am I standing up here on stage or like it, it I am so like just I'm just like in the nuance like trying to figure that out yeah. man like it's like just yeah that's where I'm at and I fucking love it man because it's different that's that's what I love about this too is is no show is ever the fucking same 
Hell yeah. No yeah. show is ever the fucking yeah. same. Do you ever have moments, like, like there's sometimes like moments where that happen really well and then like another show will come up, you'd be like, oh, I remember that. That went like this last time and you go for it and it's like, oh, yeah, not I, what I thought at all. Yeah, that, like I, I think like that's that's a thing that like yeah, you're always going to, you. it worked the once and you're like, oh, I got to fucking chase it again. Yeah. And I used to do that. Like and I'll go back and listen to my sets and I'll be like, what, what fucking worked really well right there? And I'll listen. I'm like, is that, was that just a, was that just a product of like the moment yeah. or like, is that going to work again? And you know, I, I, I'll listen and I'll keep it in mind, but like, I don't know. I try not to go back to the well too many times with yeah. shit like that. Cause it never, you know, more times than not, unless it's like a new tag yeah. or like, you know, you did something that was like so fucking good where you're like, dad, I got to add this. Yeah. Like, it's not gonna, not gonna hit. You can't <laughs> force something. Hit the same. Yeah. You can't, I don't try and force shit yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, do you, do you watch yourself? Do you listen to yourself back? Yeah, I mean, I record every set. I've probably I've recorded every set. I've been on stage for probably like seven years. So How do you, every single set. Do you get like like uh, like now? I can hear it, and I'm like, okay, this is cool. But sometimes I hear my voice, and I'm like, ah. I voice record. I, I mean, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Listening so it's to still like, yeah, it's still su- okay. God, that makes yes, sense. I think it's always gonna suck listening oh. to yourself. But <laughs> like, you know, I'd listen to it back, and it's and it's helpful because like you know on those on these shows where i have like maybe two weeks off and then i'm back on the road again like i'll get to the town and then i'll just plug in a couple of the sets from the last week and just listen you know what i mean so i've run my set yeah twice three times in my head before i step up again and i'm like well i know what i'm doing yeah you know Uh, and you're like oh oh i said that differently this time maybe let me see dude I, i fuck with everything every time i'm on stage i say things differently now so i don't know like to maybe not to my detriment but like but like i'm still i'm i just tweak i tweak constantly yeah i tweak constantly so it's always kind of different for me when did you start uh working with matt have you all been doing this so run matt, together so uh not this one so i was in port charlotte last weekend working okay. in comedy zone down nice. there for the oldest people in the fucking planet <laughs> and uh dude that's that's a hard room really that's that's a rough room okay yeah but you know i mean you know, there there are rooms all over this place where you're like, yo, if you can if you can if you can bang it in this room, you can bang it anywhere. Yeah. Um I think, you know, then when you go to New York, like I think New York's got that scariness on it. But you think so? I think New York's I think the rooms are easier. Really? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. I, I, maybe I'll catch shit for saying that. I just, in my in my opinion, man. They're probably not listening to this. Okay. <laughs> you never know. I don't know who's yeah, listening yeah. to this shit. I don't know how many people. You, people, you got 15 people? Or how many? Uh, let's, it depends on the week. Uh, you yeah. know, my, my peak, I was doing like 600. Oh, nice. Um, but, you know, sometimes. Yeah. I, you, like, you're going to get 20. I do, yeah. Because they're going to go, who the fuck's down the better? <laughs> you're going to get 20 people. I do a lot of this by myself. So, like, sometimes when I'm producing this show, it kind of takes a toll on me from doing stand up, and then sometimes I have to go do shows, and I can't do this as much and pub it as much. But yeah. you know, I'm I'm finding a rhythm to find. That's why I asked you about how like making out all the stuff work together. Dude, I just do it. Like making Dude, it work together. I just grind. Yeah. I've run. I've run for like the three last three and a half years, just full out fucking sprint. Yeah. And I think I'm gonna take August off and go to Italy and just disappear Dude, for a month. Huge. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna live in like a little town on a vineyard and drink wine and read and write that's, that's it nice. that's all i fucking want to do <laughs> you can do cheap it's cheap man you can live really? in Italy for like 650 a month dude. yo that's fire I that's, swear that's actually like less than my rent i know that's I know. wild i know you can get out there it's like 650 a month dude that's crazy yeah I, that's fucking insane i was paying more than that in college yeah it's wildly cheap right what now. um yeah, but I, I mean, going back to the Matt thing, yeah. uh, Matt and I worked a weekend in Birmingham uh, together okay. at the Stardome. It was nice. the first weekend, and we were just paired up. Like I booked a weekend there, and Matt was Matt was headlining, and like we hit it off, and uh, and so then we stayed in touch, and like we go get you know go get food in in LA, and then Matt and I like vibed over a band uh Greta Van Fleet which is like a, a rock band okay. and so like Matt and I went to a, a concert at the Greek theater That's and dope. got stoned and fucking watched a concert yeah. and so like dude he's a cool dude man uh I fucking I fucking really enjoy him and you know what's funny is like you don't it, 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 social media and television like gives you such a warped perception of people you think so yeah, yeah. dude yeah. yeah totally because all I knew of Matt was wild and out 
Oh my god! That's all I. Knew. That's the only thing yeah, I've ever seen him on. It's the only thing okay. I knew him from. I remember him on Wild It Out, but yeah, uh, and and then you meet him. Yeah, and you're just like, wow, this is a great dude. Yeah, well, you know, he was a pretty. Ni- he was a really nice guy, so, man. He was he's so nice so and chill. Fucking nice, man. He's so fucking sweet, dude. Yeah. And he's good. He's 26, man. And I, he, he, we were probably was it October, August, September, October last year. We were in, uh, we were in Birmingham together, and then he filmed his hour. And he's an hour into his next fucking hour. Yeah. It's like six, <laughs> seven months later. And yeah. you're like, motherfucker, stop writing so like fast. How? Fuck you. Yeah. You know, you're almost like, fuck. You. And it's good. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the other thing, too, where you're like, God damn it, dude. Yeah. Uh, but he's been, I mean, but he's been on stage since he was like 15, man. So that, Which is crazy. That boy doesn't care. So, like, the, the comparison, like, I don't know. I've, I started when I was 19, and mm-hmm. I always feel like I started too late. Like, no. I always feel like no. I was so late. Because I no. hear stories like that, and I'm like, man, I should have gotten this earlier. No. But I was, just, I was just a funny little asshole kid. I, I wasn't I was, a comic kid. I think I was 25. 20, how old are you 26, now? 26, 33. That's wild. Yeah, 26. So, yeah, I was 26. That's crazy. I didn't know you were 33. I'm 33, yeah. How's that? Like, uh, it's, it's, it's the greatest. It's the greatest age <laughs> in the world. 33? I, yeah, I'm not chasing ass anymore. <laughs> you just stop chasing ass. Start chasing money <laughs> yeah. in a career. That's the greatest. You get clarity, man. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you start thinking with the right head, everything kind of clears up. <laughs> It is, man. Yeah. I, you know, people now, they're like, hey, you want to hang out? I'd be like, nah, I want eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> want eight, sleep, I want yeah. eight hours of sleep. You yeah. fuck right off. I don't, I don't like, do much hanging late anymore. Like, like uh, I don't know. I tell people all the time, they're like, oh, we're going to this bar. I'm like, nah, I'm lame. I'm going to go home. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chill. It's the greatest, man. Yeah. You pick your moments. I pick my spots. Yeah. I, I don't got to do anything. <laughs> I don't got to do anything, man. Yeah. 33, 33 is the greatest, man. I think I'm just settling into like i don't know you settle into who you are and you're just like oh okay i'm comfortable with this i'm comfortable with this which is why i think i found being comfortable on stage yeah it took me a while man i was very uncomfortable with me for a while really yeah okay. i think so i just think you know i think you you know you move to la and you know you're in your, your 20s and you don't have shit and you see other people with shit, and you're yeah. like, well, I'm not shit. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, and then you just start, and then you work, you know, if you work. That's the fucking thing, too, I tell people all the time. Like, the only thing that separates people in the valley from the people in the hills is execution. Because mm. we all got ideas. Yeah. We all we all have this. We yeah. all have fucking great ideas. It's the execution of it. Yeah. And then I went. You know, when that clicked, I was like, well, let's fucking get to work, man. Yeah. You, you had know? your uh, your your animal tamer reference. I kind of like think of this as like climbing a mountain. So mm-hmm. your your hill reference was perfect. Like, cause I don't know. It's like, all right, man, you gotta you gotta put in some effort and some. You know, your legs are gonna get tired. Well, you gotta do it. Time. There's no there's no fucking excuse, man. Yeah. There's just truly no excuse. And like, I can sit here comfortably and say that that like, I independently produced a feature film that I just sold. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I like years ago, like when the web series were popular, like I fucking wrote and produced a web series that was yeah. like was successful and got some fucking heat on it that like was, with friends and it's just like yo do it yeah that was my approach with like uh like writing this show now like you know what i mean like i don't i don't know anyone where i can be like hey this blah 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 blah. i was gonna film it and put it on my youtube and you know yeah. or try to get something or, or out, even you know? like you know even write it and then like, submit it to some different screenwriting yeah. festivals man yeah. see see what people say about it you never fucking know man yeah but it's just writing this one and then it's writing the next one yeah. and then it's writing the next one then it's writing the next one mm. and you just get better it's just like standard you just get better at it the more that you do it and work Fuck on it yeah man um what are you i don't know what time you have to bounce out of here what are you I'm okay right now what are you uh what are you most excited to do that you may be not have like that you may not have done yet um uh i don't know write the next feature Mm -hmm. i guess write the next feature film write the next yeah Yeah. write the next movie you know um produce produce the next movie where do you think your ideas come from you do you you know are you are you out and about living life and then you get something yeah you just gotta live Mm -hmm. that's it man i think the hardest thing like uh like i don't know trying to sit somewhere and like come up with something out of your brain yeah. as opposed to just like like that's where everything changed for me when i just started paying attention to what was happening around yeah, me and i was like oh this is what it is uh, yeah like this is the content this is the you know it's not me sitting trying to come up with characters out of my brain i just talk to characters all day at my job like yeah you know you got to make it right in a little different way but i don't know no man that's it man I, I live you go out and you get perspective mm. and and then you see the world and you see people and yeah. you're like all right well this is where all this comes from man. okay it's just a constant well 
where would uh so like like how do how would i start working the road what do you think like like uh how what do you how do you start that how do you begin it i think you start featuring here okay you start featuring here and then you hit up len and you're like hey yeah i featured here <laughs> let me go can i feature in port charlotte yeah you know can i feature in charlotte you know mm. and you start doing it that way and then you hit up you know different bookers at like you know the funny bones and stuff and say hey i feature here here and here can i feature at one of your clubs mm. like here are my day and then you just you know you don't hound them but you just send email you just keep checking you know you just can't like you know you just keep grinding and then if there's a headliner that's in here that maybe you get to feature for one weekend you get lucky and you vibe with them and then you go hey like if you have any dates coming up like i'd love to like if you have anything like yeah i find myself like i'd just love to i'd love to work with you yeah. again i'd love to keep this you know and that's how and then it just organically kind of fucking builds yeah man. i just uh like uh like when like I told you, I got over that now. But like yeah. when I was first meeting headliners and stuff, like coming here, like a, like a little kid standing in the back of this room, man. Like I wasn't, I don't know, I didn't know if I was a comedian. And I was like, so I always yeah. felt weird about it. But now, like people would drop a special. And I'm like, hey, man, watch your special. Great work, sir. Like, you know, loved it, blah, blah, blah. Like they'll hit me back. Like, oh, that's fucking I remember you, Bobby Brown. Cool, man. Like, like yeah, we'll, we'll talk when I get around again. And like, that's yeah, pretty dope. That's fucking great, man. I tell you what, I love that because I love giving other comics they're fucking props man mm. this shit's hard yeah and and also yeah. this like, com- hard like as shit. it's hard as shit and like I, I think comics sometimes think that somebody else's success is their failure mm. and it's like dude that's not the you fucking break out of that. that's not the fucking that's not the world dude yeah. that's not how it works anytime somebody has a fucking great set or like even like when i'm in mics and shit like that like and it Somebody says, like, a fucking line, dude. Like, it could be one line where I'm like, God damn, that was a good... <laughs> yeah. I'll find that guy afterwards and be like, hey, man, that fucking line yeah. is great. Mm. And somebody will be like, wow. Because nobody fucking says, yeah. good job. Yeah, I have no problem anybody. giving people flowers. Dude, I love it. I you love have it, to. But- I have to. Yeah. I have to. Because it's like, yo, this is so fucking hard. We get beat down all the creatives for whatever reason, and especially comics and different things. Like, for whatever reason, we're the lowest, like, ring on the totem pole. And I think it's really kind of bullshit Mm. because we're the ones that, like, dude, we, you know, if if you get to a certain level and, like, you you do certain things, like, you know, you're the voice of the people, but you have the ear of the king. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Wow. Like, Dave Chappelle, like, it's like Chappelle and, like, Burr and, like, different guys. Guys, like even Michelle, like there, there's like Michelle Wolf and like all of these people out here who like, yo, you, you like we're, we're jesters. We're the voice of the people, but you have the ear of the king. Yeah. You know, Carlin used to fucking, you used to do fucking social commentary on that yeah. shit. And that's what that was. Like he would speak for the people and he, and he would have the ear of the fucking, you know, you, you have the people, you have the ear of the people that are fucking yeah. making decisions and doing different things. So for me, it is like, it is that in a sense where it's like. Yo, why are we so undervalued? Like, well, it's because I think we undervalue ourselves a lot of fucking times. <laughs> yeah. We do, dude. Yeah. You know, a that's lot of, why. A lot of comedy comes with, like, I don't know, at least me, like, self-hatred of something I've done. Where yeah. I'm like, fuck, I hate that that's funny because now i got to tell these strangers right. I did that. You know what's funny is, like, I've really moved away from shitting on myself. Really? Okay. Dude, yeah. hard. I think for the first few years, because it's a crutch. I mean, it's not a crutch. You're just, like, talking about what you know yeah. and you're talking about your insecurities and different things like that. And I think, like, there's always these bits and pieces. But, like, you don't see guys going up there and shitting on themselves yeah. anymore. Not the fucking, not the good one. Not yeah. the ones you want to be which is which is difficult because like uh like some like depending on how you get into comedy you have those people who are always like no you got to make fun of yourself or the audience won't like you no, when you say blah 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 that's bullshit man that's bullshit like when i first started out i was like i was like 20 pounds lighter i was like good looking kid like matt and then, <laughs> and everybody was like oh man you got to fucking be self-deprecating because like the like all the men in the audience are going to be against you because you're yeah. fucking good look you know and it's like are they yeah. like can i just not be a good personable human being and then be funny and like if it's like okay sure maybe a little bit but it's like people I, you look i get it like people will come up and like you know if you look a certain way if you look funny you already got that and so you got the audience and stuff like that but it's like or you could just go up there and fucking punch them real quick <laughs> and then they're like oh this guy knows what he's doing yeah so it's like well, okay well, mm-hmm. I, do i have to shit on myself yeah. or can i just say a fucking funny joke up front it's yeah. like calm down motherfuckers i know what i'm doing like yeah I'm now funny. let's go. Now we're here. We're locked in. I'm now funny. we're now we're here. Let's go. Yeah. 
and 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 then it's your job to fucking take them. Yeah. For the next however long. Um. Uh, do you remember like like uh, any actually about like a competition stuff? Do you remember any bad shows like yeah, shows where you were like, oh my god, I can't believe that just happened? Like, uh, like that. I did. I did a couple years ago. I I was coming off of a was coming off of an acting job where I had to work three months in San Francisco. So I worked three months on an acting job straight. Um. I, I did a video game. I was a lead in a video game. That's so um, I was coming off that job. And my first weekend back was in Huntsville, Alabama. And I hadn't been up on stage. I just I couldn't. Like, I literally left the job and went to the fucking... I feel like the difference of people where you just were is insane. Right. So I'm coming off three months and not doing it, man. And I'm fucking... And this was a few years ago. And I was fucking stressing. And I'm like, this isn't going to be fucking good, man. Mm. I'm fucking rusty. I was trying to run my set, like, in my head and fucking list. But I was like, this is a long time for me not to be up on stage. Yeah. Like, this is too long. And, uh, you know, and so I felt I bad. I felt bad. And so I went up and I was remembering my set and we were doing OK. And then like the, the front part of the room was like half full. There might have been like 40, you know, not, not even half full. There might have been like 40, 50 people in there. And then no, no shit, like five minutes, seven minutes into my set, a group of like 30 people walked in and went to the back and they oh, had wow. come from like. Uh, like a business function and they were all fucking drunk and loud as fuck and like I mean just ushered in and they sat in the fucking back and like people are turning around and like and so you're like okay what am I gonna do how am I gonna manage this and then one of the guys fucking sat down and he yelled he goes you got a big fucking head (laughs) and just and just it it just fucking hit me where I was like you know you're standing up there and I didn't have my fucking legs under me and the question in my head was like do I attack not attack. Do I go back at this motherfucker and potentially lose the 30 people that just sat down yeah. be, and lose the people up here because I'm talking past them? Yeah. Or do I just let that fucking slide, let them settle in and just keep in my show? And I just kept in my show, dude. And it was a fucking train wreck. I Dude, I lost those people. These people were like, oh, this fucking guy doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, so man. I lost them too. And it's just like... You know, I ended up limping off stage on yeah. that one because you're just like, dude, I just fucking did the rest of my jokes. I probably, I didn't finish my full fucking time. I know I didn't. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, good night. Yeah. And I fucking got off. And I felt, I went to the bar and drank after that one, man. Yeah. I felt bad. And then, but it was a great learning lesson. Yeah. So it was like, oh, guess what I should have done? Addressed it. Right after that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Got to. That one I had to. There's shit all the time in rooms now. Mm-hmm. I don't need to address People talk a lot of times in rooms, like if somebody's talkative and it's disrupting somebody, I won't even say anything. I'll just go stand next to them and do the joke next to them. And they dude, they shut up. Yeah. Now they have like, you're right above well, them. Right they're above. Like, look, they're I'm, right, I'm right above them. And yeah. you're like, wow. Like I don't even need words. Yeah. I don't even need words to control yeah. things anymore. And then you can even see like, oh, you feel bad for that. Like I can tell like by you looking at me now, like you knew you were wrong. Right. That or you can throw you can throw yeah. a look you can throw a, people know yeah people know when they're out of line yeah and you don't need to always address it because sometimes like dude sometimes like restraint is the best the best way to go about things yeah. like that one wasn't the case I should have fucking gone after <laughs> yeah. but, but, I did, but I did but you learn you yeah. know what I mean yeah and so I don't know man that was that was that was one of the worst for sure one of the worst shows for sure oh. one of the worst dude <laughs> just you know where you're just like sweating and you're just like nothing nothing hits and you're just stumbling through it and you're like get me the fuck off of this stage <laughs> dude get yeah. me off of this stage yeah but you just stand in it dude you just stand in it you gotta be firm let's just let it i don't know i feel like you definitely have to feel a lot of that you know you have to just even if it's good or bad, like, you know, you got to just feel it and, and be, okay, that's what this is. Yeah, I remember I remember in standing in the bowling alley and just planting my feet at the front of the stage, and I go, I'm not moving here. Yeah. I'm not moving. I just stood like this and deli- I didn't move. Just so I, I just wanted to feel my feet because I wasn't comfortable. And I was, and then, and then once everything kind of released and I was like, oh, I'm good, then you move. I don't know, man. Just sometimes you have to, like, be so uncomfortable up there just so you can get comfortable. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. How, so you you're finally comfortable now with what yeah. you got going on, yeah. stage acting and all this stuff. Yeah. Do you think uh, Do you think that there's ever like something right now that can still like you know you have more to learn? You know, if there's something happens, dude, that I learn every set. Okay, I learn every set. Every set, like I said, every set's different, man. Yeah, it's just, dude. I, I'm just, I'm building a house right now. Mm. Each set is a brick. 
Mm, okay. Brick by brick. That's pretty cool. Does that like do you just do that on purpose? It's a brick behind oh, us. No, so. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, look, man, I don't know. What, I don't know what the brick house by is. brick. That's the name of this yeah, episode. I don't know I what the it. house is going to end up looking like, man. <laughs> but we're, we're, you know, we're just stacking bricks right now. Dude. Yeah, that's it, man. That's yeah, exciting. I, I learn man. every every dude. I learn on everything. Mm. I love it now. I love learning. I didn't when I was a kid. Mm. I fucking I love learning shit yeah. now. Yeah. How does uh do you, like how does your family feel about you being a comic, a comedian? How when like did did you integrate that into you know, was that ever a weird thing when I first Yeah, I yeah. think I think my mom hates it. Really? Think, she yeah. doesn't like it? No, dude. Oh, my mom man. Hates, well she's just worried that I'm you know, I'm never gonna you know, that I'm never gonna be like, I don't know, secure in anything that I do. Wow, okay. You know? You know, just out of love. She yeah. just wants me to be financially secure and like yeah, you know happy that makes sense you know that's do, it do they ever come to your shows uh not really like my pops will stop in every once in a okay. while in atlanta and stuff like that but uh no they don't really ever come to anything and that's fine i yeah. get it did, you know? does it feel weird having people like like i guess like now that you're you know you've been in it for so long right now i don't invite my family or like people i'm like dating I never, to I shows never I'm like, i still I don't invite friends people okay are like why don't you invite me to shows i'm like Eh. Yeah, I say the same thing. Where I'm like, I, I'm I'm doing something else. Like yeah. I, I can't focus on you because I'm working. Yeah, because I'm working. Yeah, why would I invite you to work? That's a better answer. Yeah, than what I was given because I'm working. Yeah, I'm, why Why do you want to come to work? <laughs> and they're like, no, it's a show. I'm like, no, nah, it's work. You don't even want to go to your job. Yeah, no. <laughs> like I don't want you to come to work. I, yeah. Look now, I think I'm in a place where I'm like, okay, I think for a while I was like, I'm not funny enough for you to come. I say that all the time yeah. to people, and they're like, "Oh, you gotta stop putting yourself down." No, I'm like, "No, nah, just don't." I'm, no. I'm, I'm gonna say, "Just don't show up." If now I, people want to come. I'm like, yeah. "All right, come to the show." If I see you, we're not friends anymore. Yeah, nah, I'm now I'm fine. I'm like, "Come to the show." <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah, let's know. But for a while, it's like I'm working. Yeah, I don't want you to come. I'm working. Yeah, yeah. Um, the name of this podcast is the Writers Block Podcast. So uh, I guess the last thing I'll bring up, like, uh, have you ever? dealt with writer's block as a creator, as a writer, like what was the hardest, you know, hurdle that you had to get over to, to be able to be, you know, to get back in the books again, back in the notebooks again? Yeah. Um, I think, I think I've, I've hit one, I think I've hit a wall recently. Um, creatively, I think, like I said, I've been running for so long and doing so much. Like I, like right now I, like we just sold this feature. So we, you know, we're, we're trying to deliver a movie right now i just finished post-production on that one from netflix and i'm currently in post-production like another short film so like i'm doing all of that like uh, before that i was in production in december i was in production in february on two different things i've had a, a multiple acting jobs in between and i've been doing the road all while i've been doing that yeah. so like i'm not any time to sit or like do anything so like i'll come out here and like maybe i haven't I, I didn't write anything this week or this weekend or like, I, you know, and so I'll get down on myself or, you know, I'm, I'm trying to write, I'm working on another feature right now. And, and, but trying to write stand up, I think I have hit like this point where I'm just like, I'm fucking tired or I feel like I'm pouring from an empty cup. Mm. And that's a good analogy. Yeah. And I just have to be like, okay, well, if that's happening, how can I work on my, how can I work on the craft in a different way? Which is like, okay, let me work the stage and let me, mm. let me, let me just check in. Let me make sure that I'm, that I'm doing everything I need to be doing up here. And then it's routine, man. Like I, writer's block, I think is kind of like this. Most of the time it really is this bullshit thing where it's like, oh, if you sit down every day and just write, like, I don't ever, I think a lot of times to get over that and I, I, I do it, I don't write with a goal. Mm. You just have to sit down and write. So, like, I'll wake up and, like, I'll do my morning pages sometime, you know, most of the time when I'm writing or, like, when I feel like I'm not doing anything, I'll, I'll sit down and I'll do my morning pages, you know, or I'll read, just read something or, you know, like, or I'll just, like, put a pen in my hand and sit in front of a notebook at one point and be like, all right, cool, right, just write a page. Yeah. I don't care what it is. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't have to be anything. You read, I fucking hate this for the whole goddamn page. Like, eventually, like, that that it'll turn into something else. Yeah. The, so I think the motion of it would be like, okay, the motion of doing it. That's me, all it is. There's no, I, I, the writer's block is this thing where it's like, no, you're just not sitting down. Mm. Just sit down. Like, just sit down. You can write, you know, you could write bagels at the top of the page and then write a page on bagels. And yeah. I'm like, you, I, so one of those, one line, probably going to be funny. Okay, cool. You, you wrote one line today. Yeah. Great. You did your job. I think it's crazy how sometimes writing can like, make you feel a little tired like i have a job and i'm on my feet and i'm moving around and i get off and i'm like that was nothing but sometimes i'll write and if i do have like a really good writing session that day a couple pages and some good jokes i'm i feel i have no energy left yeah i have like nothing 
Yeah. yeah. I think it's crazy. It's almost like exercising it in a way. I don't know. A little yeah. bit. It's least. a muscle. It's a muscle. So, you know, work out. Discipline. Yeah. Discipline is how you <laughs> yeah. get over riders block. All right. You heard it here first, people. Mm, okay. No, I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Don, once again, man. So you got, you know, you're working on some projects. Uh, yeah. You got some features that you've been working on behind the scenes. Yep. Uh, do you want to drop the names one more time? Let them know your socials. Let them know where people can find you. Um, yeah, Don DePetta on Instagram. That's all I got. Don DePetta on Instagram. And you're not going to see any clips, so it's not even fucking worth it. Just a fun guy. All right. <laughs> Just go follow a fun guy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. For no fucking reason. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, thank you for giving me your time today, man. I yeah, appreciate man. you coming to do the show. Um, here, I mean, this will be out. Was it today? Saturday, so they're gonna miss it anyway. Uh, this would be out this week, though. Tuesday, Wednesday, around. I'll, I usually I'll put it in, out. I'll be in Tampa next weekend. Tampa. You, I'll be in the side split. I got some listeners in Tampa. I know yeah. for sure. So well, if you if you're listening to this, go check out Don on in Tampa. Out. Side split. I've been hearing a lot about that place as of late. I've been hearing a lot of people bring it up to me. Yeah. Um, Shout out to the Comedy Zone, as always, for letting us get this done. Um, two shows tonight. How are you feeling right now? You know, you get some rest, get some food, going to take a nap or something? Yeah, probably. Nice. Cool. <laughs> Back to Jack's Beach ever, or are you just nah, out of here? I'm done, man. Nice. I, swam, I swam in your ocean naked last night, dude. I'm good. I, I, I pay, you know, I checked in. You I, paid your Jacksonville dues? I, no, I checked in. I checked in with Mother Nature. I checked in <laughs> with the ocean. Yeah, yeah. her and I are good, and I'm good for a while. Yeah. All right. Well, hell yeah, man. Uh, thank you for doing this podcast again. I yeah. appreciate y'all listening wherever you're listening from. Uh, Don DePet on Instagram, maybe Bobby on Instagram. We'll see y'all and talk to y'all next week. Peace out, yo. Thank you.